What's up guys, my name is Brent Barbano. I'm one of the co-founders of ShareGrid, and I'm excited today because we are going to dive right into one of my favorite topics, and that's shooting anamorphic. But not just on any camera, this is with the Panasonic GH5. I was very lucky last week, I was able to uh, shoot some tutorial videos on the Panasonic GH5 at uh, my friend Ilya's place, Hot Rod Cameras here in LA. It was really awesome. We uh, shot with the PNS Technic Rehouse Kawa anamorphic lenses, which are gorgeous if you haven't shot with them yet. Uh, but today I want to look at the footage we shot and show you some uh, basic tips on how to edit with anamorphic footage. And then we're going to look at the footage and I want to talk about some more optical um, characteristics of anamorphic in general that I think as any filmmaker, if you haven't really shot with anamorphic before, these are things you need to pay attention to. So I've already imported the footage. When you record on the GH5, you are uh, recording on a four x three sensor. So this is a four x three image, and uh, when you're shooting anamorphic, it stretches the image horizontally. So um, to cram it all in on the four x three sensor to take advantage of every pixel on the sensor, um, you're getting a squeezed image, right? So it looks a little crazy, but here's what you gotta do. So now I'm gonna drag this onto the sequence. Now, sometimes the uh, Adobe Premiere will ask you if you want to conform to the timeline. This time it didn't. In the event that it does ask you to conform to the sequence, just say no and I'll, sh and I'll show you why. So let's pretend it asked you and you said no. Now let's say you want to uh, have your timeline, your sequence, your entire video in an anamorphic aspect ratio. What you would do then is you click on the sequence right here, you would change the sequence settings. As you can see, it's a four by three aspect ratio right here. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the pixel aspect ratio two to one. What that's doing is it's actually doubling the horizontal pixel uh, aspect ratio. So now instead of my pixels being square, they're gonna be like this. They're gonna be twice as long, right? So I click that. You always wanna click max, maximum bit depth, maximum render quality, um, and I usually like to do QuickTime Video Pro Video Preview for uh, just do Apple ProRes 422, that's fine. Um, and then I'm gonna come back to this, but I'm gonna show you what happens here. Click OK. OK, so that's the first step. First step is now your sequence is, is the somewhat the right aspect ratio. Now I'm gonna go into the actual um, file and we need to modify that as well. So I'm gonna go into here, I'm gonna go into modify, interpret footage, and it's the same thing. We're gonna do conform to two to one. But it's a little weird, right? Um, this actually isn't the uh, traditional 239 or 240 aspect ratio that you want with anamorphic. In this case, that's what I want. It's a little longer. This is actually a 2.66 aspect ratio. It's too long. We actually need to trim the sides of it. So um, I've actually already gone ahead and done a little bit of math. Um, and so what, what we do is we go back into the sequence settings here. Sequence settings. And you can see here, 3328. So if I type in 2983, OK, OK, so now you have a proper 239 aspect ratio for your GH5 footage. So when you're shooting anamorphic, here's some really important things to think about. Number one, flare. Everyone loves an anamorphic flare, don't get me wrong. I'm a big fan, I nerd out about it, it's beautiful, it's iconic, it's cinematic, blah, 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 blah. It's usually that horizontal blue flare uh, that you see going across the frame uh, when it's hit by a really strong light source. It's awesome, it's really desirable, um, but I want you to be careful because I think sometimes uh, flare and flares can be really distracting. Um, some people love anamorphic lenses because they have a flare and it gives character, and some people hate it. Some people prefer lenses with special coating that kind of stop uh, and prevent uh, any kind of flare from happening. Um, it's personal preference, it depends on what you're shooting, um, but I just want filmmakers to exercise caution when using flare. Overdoing it can be really distracting. Number two, distortion. There's a lot that we can go into when it comes to distortion, but in particular, um, pay attention to the edges of the frame. 
So when you pan left and right, or you put subjects in certain parts of the frame, um, anamorphic lenses tend to force you to frame what's important more towards the center of the frame. It's kind of a sweet spot right in the middle of the frame. Uh, I'm gonna pull up some footage right now. I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean. And I'm on this wider lens and pay attention to when I pan. Watch what happens to Sam's face. Um, you see how she kind of bends, her, her face gets a little more morphed, a little weird. Um, that's, that's lens distortion. That's just what happens at the edge of the lenses. The optics uh, for lenses are not nearly as clean, as sharp, as precise. Uh, on the edges as they are in the center. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. You would not, and this is a weird frame in general, but you typically don't wanna frame your subject on this, uh, on the edge like this. The other thing too is um, focus fall off. I, I think uh, not just distortion happens on the edge of anamorphic lenses and lenses in general, but um, the focus, how sharp and accurate the lenses are. You'll notice that when you put something that's important and in focus, uh, towards the edge of the frame, they won't be nearly as sharp as if they were in the center of the frame. So that's something to think about. The other thing too is um, there's a lot of vignetting. Uh, so as you get to the edge of the frame, you'll notice that things get a little darker. Uh, maybe uh, the contrast won't be as strong. Um, that's also something that's really important to pay attention to. What's great about all of these things is if you frame anamorphic in such a way so that you keep what's important towards the center, all of these things kind of guide the eye towards the center of the frame. Uh, and that's really important when it comes to um, uh, coming up with uh, cinematic compositions. Another thing to think about is lens breathing. So when you rack focus on an anamorphic lens, particularly these lenses, you'll notice that it breathes, that it kind of um, morphs and changes a little bit. And I'm gonna show you exactly what that means. This one's really important. It can be a little distracting sometimes when you rack focus. Let's say, for example, here I am rack focusing to the back of the wall. You notice how Sam's body and face kind of morphs and changes and gets a little distorted. So something to keep in mind, it is just part of shooting with optics, particularly anamorphic. Some do it more than others. You might not want to have as strong of a focus rack or as fast of a focus rack because it will be a little distracting. Some people like the look, it's got a vintage feel to it, but again, something to keep in mind. All right, that is it. Look, this is an amazing camera. Anamorphic is not going away. It's an amazing tool for cinema uh, right now, especially with indie filmmakers. But I want you to be careful. Um, it's really important to pay attention to these things. And look, there's a lot of other things when it comes to anamorphic that I didn't cover here. Uh, so I strongly suggest reading, researching, go to our anamorphic lens test. There's a ton of information there. But at the end of the day, it's an amazing tool. Anamorphic isn't going anywhere. I strongly encourage all of you to get out there and learn. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. Don't forget to subscribe, comment below. I love talking to all of you. And most importantly, don't forget to get out there and start creating.